Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to start off a little bit of not really quite a series, but a couple episodes where I show you how to kind of do rapid designing on the fly and then take it to 3D printing. So today I'm going to start with a bracket to hold my computer. I want to uh, mount it to the side of some cabinets in my workshop. So I'm going to whip something up. I'm going to see how it goes. Now I'm going to do all this in real time just to show you how fast you can use something like Tinkercad to model something that's pr of practical use in the world and then 3D print it. So let's jump into it. So I've got my work surface now set uh, to 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. We're going to print this on the Creality. And so I've got my ruler in place, uh, kind of starting out with. So one of the first things I'm going to do is drag a box onto the work surface. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, 260 millimeters tall. And I've got the wrong one. I'm going to hit Control Z. I want this one. I want it to be lengthwise 260. I always get that messed up because you notice it kind of looks like that's what it is. Uh, but on the other side, I am going to make it 150 millimeters tall. And then we're going to make this uh, 104 millimeters wide. Now this is actually about the size of the computer I'm looking for it to hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get hit Control C, Control V. I'm going to duplicate this because what I'm going to now do is modify this guy. So what I'm going to do is take this 104. Now I want to put five millimeters on each side of it. So I'm going to turn this from 104 to 114 and make it a little bit wider. Uh, I also want in the bottom here to give myself a little bit of room, five millimeters of room. So instead of doubling it, I'm only going to go five. So I'm going to go 265 in this direction. Now the top direction, uh, it's going to be passed through. So I'm not going to change that. So now here, what I'm going to do is on this guy is I'm going to turn him into a hole. And now you see how I have kind of saved myself a few steps here in uh, just replicating it, first creating my shape and then adding my external dimensions to it. So I'm going to kick this up to 160, give myself a little bit of room. And then I'm going to bring this guy back and I'm going to kind of put him in here. And then I'm going to use my favorite tool, the Align tool. And so I'm just going to center this guy in here and then I'm going to uh, bring this guy, let's see, I want to bring him down onto the um, down to the ruler and so I've now got the ruler down here at this corner and then boom if I hit this now I'm going to change this to 5 and whoops not 50 but 5 you guys are making me nervous watching me alright so now I have this this basic outline if you will and what I'm going to do is now I want the top to go through. I'm going to pull it up a little bit taller. And I'm poking through the bottom, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to group this real quick. And then bang, I have it set up. Now, one of the other things, I don't want this whole piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just, this, this is just going to be arbitrary. Um, just about how I like it because the idea behind this this piece was just to kind of keep it from tipping over so I don't want it um, yeah I don't need too much there in other words so I'm just gonna go ahead and if I grab the right one and half the time the trouble is just grabbing the right one I'm just gonna knock it down to about like this and more so I'm doing this for aesthetics uh, rather than anything else. So that's why I'm not worrying about some of the measurements. And that's part of the um, the goal is there's a lot of actual what I call design uh, in this and it's probably what it is called design uh, in, in coming up with something because there's not a huge structural need so it's more so what aesthetically looks nice. So I've got now my base clamp here. Now I'm not completely done with this because I want to have a little bit of offset on the bottom so I'm going to go over here, I'm going to pull a wedge in, and uh, now this is a little bit small, and uh, to work with, so what I'm going to do is I want to spin this on end. I'm going to hold the shift key down, okay, I'm at 90. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this around, so something like this, and I'm going to bring it over here. So I'm going to now make it 150 tall to match my 
um, other piece and then I'm going to uh, what was this 114 so I'm gonna make this uh, 113 a little bit shy uh, of the um, uh, bottom and I'll show you why here in a second and I'm gonna go ahead and use my favorite tool and I'm gonna align to the back side and then I'm just simply going to bump this guy up into this bottom now you'll notice that I mentioned before I left this a little bit short because uh, if I bring it all the way to the edge I run the chance of having a little bit of artifacting here and for you know roughly a millimeter that's not too big and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change this down to 0.5 because I'm going to bump this up once I'm about a quarter millimeter in millimeter in millimeter millimeter and then so I'm going to bang so now I have this base like this. Yeah, that's probably a little bit too much. I'm going to do Control Z back out, uh, and then I'm going to bring this back up uh, instead of 20. Whoops. I'm going to make this about 10, and now I have to bump that back up because I took away some from it. And so I'm just going to slide this back up, and again, bump it in by about a quarter millimeter and then group this guy. All right, so now I have for a little bit of support and deflection down here against the back. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to create some bolt holes. So I'm gonna create some uh, bolts. Now I'm gonna wanna offset this a little bit too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and make this uh, roughly seven millimeters, a little bit bigger than a quarter inch um, because that's how I want the heads. So. Uh, 6.25 is roughly a quarter inch. Now what I'm going to do is this is 20 tall. I'm going to bring this down to about 10, make it a little bit more reasonable. And then I'm going to bring another um, cylinder here and I'm going to make this three. And I'm going to make this three. Uh, I'm not sure the size of bolts, I'm, or not really bolts, but screws I'm going to use to screw it into the wood. So I'm going to just kind of uh, add a little bit a little bit here with the three and that, that should give me a big enough hole for most things and then what I'm going to do is now uh, because that's 20 tall I'm going to bring it down by whoops I'm going to go negative 15 and now this is down there uh, I want to clean up my sides I'm going to bump my sides up on both and if I get this one bump sides up on the top too this is where this way I have a little bit to work with, and I'm going to join these into one one group. So and now I have uh, basically my hole here. So now what I need to do is kind of turn it up here so I can see and get this stuff out of the way. And I'm going to hold the shift key down, move it to 90. And then what I'm going to also do is kind of rotate it this way. Grab this one and shift key, rotate it 90. And uh, I am, where am I at? So I think I'm s at 7. So I want to set this to be a 10. And I think I screwed that up. I got the wrong one. So I'm at negative, must be the negative 6. So I want to set this at 10. All right, so I'm 10 off the deck here. So I want to move this guy back here a little bit. So I'm 10 off the deck here. And what I want to do is I want to replicate this. So I'm going to replicate this again and uh, I'm going to take this up instead of 10 I'm gonna take it up to 75 now as you see here I'm off the bottom I know why I'm three and so to uh, center this uh, what I want to do is go up make this 76.5 and I think I'm getting this right if not I'm sure somebody will correct me uh, and then what I want to do is again create another one of these and I'm gonna do control B Go over here and I'm going to take this up to 150 and so now this puts it at the top and uh, so this is now going to be at the top of this and then so what I want to do is take the 150 and then let's see if I bring it down uh, whoops so if I bring it down to 140 did I screw that up somewhere where did it go I screwed something up somewhere. That's where Control Z is great. Let's go back to Control Z. So let's go down to 140. So I'm at 140, and then if I want to bring it up by 141.5, so half of that distance, 
Now that should roughly put me all the same. So now, but the problem is, is look at this. This is all Willy Wonkers. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it like this. Go to my favorite tool, align. Now all of these are centered. And then I want to center to the back. And I have all of these now set up uh, nicely or aligned uh, to create knockout holes at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create um, a group of these. And then I'm simply going to bring these over here. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of zoom in. And I'm going to walk these in until it just touches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down here. And I'm going to change this back to one millimeter. And I'm just going to bump it in by one. So these are going to be recessed by one millimeter. This is going to give me about four millimeters of grip in here so now what I do is I'm going to spin this back around and I'm just going to highlight this stuff and then group them together and there we go so um, I'm not liking that top hole so I don't have something right on that top hole so again I'm going to go back to control Z and then I'm going to click this and do an ungroup and I'm going to see where this guy sits on height. So I did 141. Where did I screw up? Because I'm at this guy. I'm at 10 above. Um, I'm going to... So if I went 10 down... Oh, I think I actually have to subtract it from 140. So if 150 puts me at the top... I've got to go down by three, so I think I need to go down to one thirty-seven. All right, that looks a little better, so I'm going to go back and select these. Turn them all back into a hole, and then go ahead and regroup them. Yeah, sometimes on the fly, the math uh, works its way out. So we have now we have now have our object, and uh, let's go ahead and print it. So let's send it to the printer. Let's take a watch of a time lapse, and we'll see how it turns out. So see you over at the bench. Okay, we're back from the time lapse, and boy, what a mess did that turn out. So, one of the things about this channel is I'm going to share with you guys my real experience. So this is sort of maker reality TV a little bit. I'm not just going to show you the perfect, because life doesn't work that way, and I'm sure even Norm Abrams has had some challenges in his life, too. Eh, probably small ones. Anyways, this failed miserably on multiple dimensions. So definitely, I, I, I babysat this for over four hours, went to bed thinking, okay, I made it this far, life is good, and then you've seen what happens up in the video. Poof, wow. So I wake up to that in the morning. So anyways, it, it definitely um, had some major lifting along here, as you can see, and, uh, and as well as some <laughs> pretty big delamination on, on this. So... Uh, 
This is probably, I, I typically haven't printed a lot of larger objects. I thought this would be good because of the lower surface area of this. Uh, I've just, before I printed this, uh, printed a new water bath for the CNC, which you'll see in upcoming episodes. But I was rather surprised that this went so Willy Wonkers on me. But anyways, what I decided to do also is just, you know, heck, I'll give it a shot. It looks you know crappy but I wanted to see if the design worked and, and guess what the design didn't even work so this is a double fail both on print and design because this unit this is the unit here and this probably weighs probably mm, 12 15 pounds and the deflection that it pulls here is just way too much I'm a little bit surprised because I thought um, you know it would definitely hold the weight on the inside here and that this would be enough to kind of offset but it's not I, I think with this I would have to go uh, a very large angle bracket down here to defer the deflection uh, of this which simply just makes this piece too big to to practically 3d print unless I do it in a couple different pieces I, I think in, I think what I'm gonna do is actually turn to the CNC to solve this problem uh, so watch for that coming up but again I just kind of wanted to share you know the reality of design and things like that so if this wasn't so heavy um, this I think would have worked fine and I really liked the idea I really liked um, the concept and if it would have turned out okay because it you know with the with the uh, screw holes here and actually a piece broke off as I was tightening it down up here also because uh, of the delamination but uh, uh, it had no problem holding the weight uh, the, the the pedgy was structurally strong enough it was just the deflection you know looked like you know garbage so anyways hopefully you learned something from my mistakes if not you got a good chuckle out of that time lapse i know i'm waking up to that <laughs> i had a pretty good chuckle you know after doing this for so long when things fail like that i mean it's more of a chuckle than it is in you know you know crap or something uh because it just part of 3d printing right you have challenges you learn from them and you move on with speaking of that don't forget the swag shop up there don't forget to give it a big thumbs up hey reality tv at its finest and uh if you're not a subscriber subscribe i do have a lot more successful projects than i do projects like this but they're all a learning experience so hit me up in the comments below let me know your horror stories and we'll catch all you guys in the next video cheers Please click right below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all.